the final video on an Edexcel additional chemistry topic three, and this video is on separation techniques. So we need to know um, three ways in which we can separate um, mixtures, um, and in particular mixtures of liquids. And now there's three um, ones that we need to know. The first one is if we have what we call immiscible liquids. Okay, immiscible. Think about you can think about about this if you want as unmixable. Okay, so liquids that do not mix together. Okay, so immiscible, unmixable liquids that do not mix. So if we've got immiscible, we are also going to have miscible, where the liquids do mix. The third separation technique we're going to do is, um, well, actually, it's another way to separate miscible liquids, but it's called chromatography. It's going to talk about that one as well. Now, immiscible liquids um, is pretty straightforward. Okay, so to separate um, two liquids that do not mix together, uh, for example, oil and water, we need to use a special piece of apparatus called a separating funnel, which looks a little bit like this. Okay, so we have somewhere where we can pour in, where we can pour in our mixture of liquids. We then have a section where the layers are going to separate out at the bottom. We have a tap, which will allow us to separate the lower layer. Okay, so one example of um, a mixture that we could separate using this would be oil and water. So we were going to have a layer of oil, which imagine you are uh, washing up a greasy pan at home. The water, um, sorry, the oil will always float on top of the water you have, unless you use lots of washing up liquids. So we have a top layer of oil. We are then going to have a bottom layer of water. Okay, and again, because these liquids do not mix, they are immiscible, it is dead easy to separate using this separating funnel. Okay, and what we need to know about this is that, that our more dense liquid or our denser liquid will always sink to the bottom. Okay, so water will go to the bottom because it is more dense than oil. Oil will stay at the top because it is less dense. So all we need to do is pour our mixture into a separating funnel. We're going to invert it. Well, obviously we want to put a, a lid on here first, otherwise um, you can do what I did when I was in labs at university once and pour ferrocene all down my front. Anyway, uh, lid on that. Invert your separating funnel several times, allow the layers to separate out. The more dense layer will go to the bottom. We can then simply open the tap and drain off that uh, more dense layer. We will close it um, just before we start getting the oil out and then we can separate them um, nicely. So that is our first method using separate, uh, separating funnel. Okay, the second method we are going to use is uh, used to separate miscible liquids. And here we are going to use an old favorite from core chemistry, fractional distillation. Okay, so a quick reminder about the key parts of fractional distillation. Uh, we are going to want to heat up a liquid or heat up slash evaporate or boil a liquid. A mixture of liquids, okay? And then hopefully if we have a mixture of liquids which will have different boiling points, the mixture will separate out and we can condense, condense um, the different compounds or different chemicals at different points and we're then gonna collect them, okay? The example they want for additional chemistry is not crude oil anymore um, is actually air. So if we 
have a little think again about our fractional installation setup, it was going to look something like this. Okay, so it looks very similar to the one you would use to separate crude oil out. Um, and we have our, oops, we have our um, trays here, which we're going to use to collect the compounds. The first thing we need to do before we can start this at all is to actually cool down our air. We cannot um, separate air out uh, when it's a gas. We must cool it down, turn it into a liquid. So I'm going to put cold liquid air is going to go in here. Okay. Um, it's got to be cold enough to make all of the um, elements in here, nitrogen, oxygen, everything in there has to be a liquid. We're then going to allow it to heat up. So first step is the cold air goes in. Second step is going to be allowed to heat up. Okay, or you can even heat it up yourself, speed it up a little bit. And the um, the substances in air with the lowest boiling points are going to um, evaporate first. Okay, so. Let's put this at the top, let's try and use a different colour. Okay, so three lowest boiling points evaporate first. Okay. As they rise up, we're going to cool them down again and condense them, and we want to collect our liquid fractions of air um, on our trays here. Okay, so there are our steps for fraction distillation. The third separation technique which you need to know about is chromatography. And this is again used to separate immiscible liquids generally. But in particular things like ink, coloured substances, often food colourings. You do use chromatography in chemistry um, later on if you go to college or university. Um, this is the kind of an introduction using what we call paper chromatography. So first off we need to know what our setup is going to look like. And to do chromatography you need to get yourself a beaker of some sort. Okay, And using a splint over the top. We're going to hang a piece of filter paper or chromatography paper. Okay, normally using a paper clip to clip it on. Okay, you're going to hang a piece of filter paper into a beaker of water. Okay, before you do this, it is really, really important that you draw a pencil line on your chromatography paper at a certain point and that pencil line must be above this layer of water. You are then going to have your, um, before you do this again, you're going to put your the uh, ink you, or substance you want to separate on that pencil line and this gives us our starting or reference point. Okay, so as this, um, as this process carries on, the water is going to rise up the filter paper and as it does so, it is going to start to separate out the colours that make up this ink. So what happens is the different chemicals in the ink will actually um, be attracted at different strengths to the to the filter or chromatography paper. The ones that are attracted uh, very strongly to it will move up slowly up the paper. The ones that are attracted less strongly will separate out more quickly. And when we um, finish this experiment, we might get something that looks like this. Okay. The reason we did a pencil line to start with is because the pencil will not move. So this is going to be our reference point here. Okay. We might end up with something that looks like this. First thing, I'm going to just say my water, okay, my solvent rose to this point here. So that is where the height that my water got to. And then I might, for example, have purple up here, a bit of yellow here. I might have a bit of red here. Okay, generally when you do this, it doesn't look anywhere near as nice as this, but this is the general idea. Okay, oh, that's a bit similar. That's supposed to be orange there. Okay, now when you when it comes to um, 
analyze and, and uh, do some calculations with this, we need to be able to measure and then use certain distances. First off, the distance that the water or the solvent has traveled is called your solvent distance. Okay, and that is our reference point here. If you are asked a question to calculate the RF or retention factor of, let's say, red here. Okay, what you need to do, first off, once you've got your solvent distance, you're also going to need this red distance here. Distance. Okay, I'm going to make up some numbers. I'm going to say that this red has travelled two centimetres. And I'm going to say that my solvent has travelled four centimetres. Okay, to calculate the retention factor of red, okay, what the retention factor means is the ratio at which the colour travels up your filler paper compared to the solvent. If the retention factor was one for red, the red would have travelled at exactly the same speed as the solvent, so the red line would be bang on there. If the retention factor was zero, the red would not have moved at all, it would have stayed down here. As it is, it has travelled halfway up, two centimetres compared to the four centimetres the solvent has travelled. To calculate the retention factor, we need to do the following um, calculation. You need to do the distance that the red has travelled, which in this case is two, divided by the distance the solvent has travelled, four, and that is going to give us 0 0.5. Okay, so this tells us the red is going to travel um, half the dis The red um, ink, sorry, will travel at half the distance that the solvent travels, and this will always be true for that particular chemical or that particular colour of ink. If we wanted to do uh, purple now, so let's just say retention factor of purple. Okay, and um, this time I am going to say that the purple distance from the pencil line to the purple is uh, 3.21 centimetres, so a bit more trick, a bit of a trickier number. However, the idea is it's out of the same. Okay, the purple ink has travelled 3.21 centimetres. The solvent, the water, has travelled 4 centimetres still. So my retention factor calculation is just 3.21 divided by 4, which is going to give me an answer of... 3.21 divided by 4, 0 0.8025. So it's really important when you do these that your final answer is between 0 and 1. Okay, remember that if the retention factor is 1, the ink would have travelled at exactly the same speed as the solvent.